In 2022, one out of every three rocket launches in the world were Falcon 9 or Falcon Heavy. So that's 61 Falcon flights out of 186 total global launch attempts. So not only does that number set a SpaceX record, but sets a worldwide record for the most launches by one company in a single year. Now, SpaceX is looking to blow that number out of the water with 100 launches in 2023. So, is that even possible? And if so, how can they keep up the cadence? So to put that into perspective, exactly 10 years ago, 2013 saw 81 launches total from the entire planet. So to launch 100 times this year, you need, well, at least 100 satellites. Now, as fun as it is to launch Teslas and a wheel of cheese, which actually launched on the second Falcon 9 mission, those don't pay the bills. The company's reliability and quick turnaround, though, is certainly helping it get customers, with the help especially of the Department of Defense and some NASA contracts. The upcoming manifest is loaded with a mix of classified payloads, ISS crew and cargo launches, and science missions like Psyche. I wonder if you've heard about that one before. It's actually set to study a metal asteroid. Oh wait, wrong kind of metal. But you are also creating demand. Yes, you watching. The US is taking part of the C-band spectrum, one of the wavelengths in which satellites communicate, and auctioning it off to mobile providers, giving you more bandwidth when using 5G. They've given satellite providers until December of this year to switch the frequencies of their connections between the satellites and ground stations. So it's a race to replace these C-band satellites, which means more immediate launch demand this year. Most importantly, SpaceX is in a very unique position in that one of the biggest customers is, well, themselves. Starlink internet satellites are scheduled to make up about half of the 100 missions. There's already been at least one launch of the second generation constellation of satellites, which will have more than 7,500 satellites when it's done. So some quick math of 7,500 satellites total with 54 satellites per launch, that comes out to, well, a lot of launches needed. I'm sure you can see the number actually on screen now. And keep in mind, once Starship comes online, that's another vehicle capable of launching even larger Starlink satellites. We'll talk more about Starship's role in a little bit. So, they've got satellites to launch, that's a good start, but do they have the rockets to launch them all? Falcon 9 rockets are mostly reusable. Keyword, mostly. That at least helps a little bit. First stages and fairing halves, the nose cone that protects the satellites in the atmosphere, are all recovered and flown again. Just last year, SpaceX managed to recover nearly 60 boosters on barges and landing zones. Of the 61 launches last year total, 85 different fairing halves were also recovered to use again. And keep in mind, any crew or ISS cargo mission doesn't use fairings. The second stage, however, has to be brand new each time. Just a few months ago, SpaceX announced their 200th second stage ever built. The first Falcon 9 flew back in 2010, so that means in the last 13 years, they've only been able to build 200. And yes, we're aware they've improved production over time, but that's still not a lot of second stages if you're trying to hit 100 launches. So that means they're going to have to ramp up production. One way we can really see how production is going is by looking at their engine testing in McGregor, Texas. Our 24-7 cameras at McGregor alone show they're test firing one second stage every five days. That still comes out to only 70 second stages a year though, so they've got some work to do. And don't forget, you can watch all these engine tests on McGregor Live 24-7. Of course, just because the first stage and fairings are reusable doesn't mean that won't be a potential bottleneck. Right now, SpaceX has 20 first stages. Well, technically. Some are still testing at McGregor, some are reserved for special missions, and others are on vacation in Cabo. Oh, no, wait, it says here that they're actually just being refurbished. So 
In actuality, you're looking at 10 boosters at any given time, split between Florida and Vandenberg Space Force Base in California. Some of those boosters are showing their age though, mainly with all of the soot from flying over and over again. Now the fuel used by the Falcon 9 is called RP-1, which is a refined form of kerosene, a carbon-based fuel. When it realizes its engines on the way down, it will literally fly through its own smoke plume, depositing soot onto the rocket. As of now, it seems like it hasn't affected performance of the booster, but as the weight grows, it's likely SpaceX will have to look at if it will impact performance, possibly hindering their chances at reaching those 100 launches. A few boosters have now flown 15 times, and while SpaceX hasn't shared exactly what is needed to get a booster ready between flights, we know on average it's a about 60 days between missions per booster. This means SpaceX will have to bring that time down or build more boosters. And in the words of Jack, more boosters, more better. Speaking of reusing boosters, these boosters have to land after they're flown, either back on land at a landing zone or on a drone ship floating out in the ocean. Right now, there's three floating landing ships for boosters. Florida is home to just read the instructions, something I know I don't do very well, and a shortfall of Gravitas, with Of Course I Still Love You out on the west coast. Each of these ships sits hundreds of kilometers offshore, waiting to catch the boosters, which takes time getting out there and then back. SpaceX has flipped around a drone ship in a single day, taking off a booster and then sending it right back out to catch another one. A quick reminder, you can also watch this happen live 24-7 on our Space Coast live feed. So, in theory, if each drone ship supports three landings per month, which has happened, then boom, you're able to support over 100 launches. Well, actually, think about it. Every landing at the top of the deck is getting blasted by a rocket engine as the booster slows itself down. That's going to leave a mark. Well, actually, a lot of marks. So, those decks are going to need to be refurbished occasionally so you don't burn a hole in it. So, what do you do during the downtime? Just land it on land. Certain missions can return to launch site or RTLS. The key there is only certain missions. The payloads being launched have to either be pretty light or going into a very specific orbit to land back on land. That's because the booster has to fire its engines up three more times after liftoff. Once to stop its forward momentum and basically do a 180, another to slow it down in the atmosphere, and a final one to, well, land. That uses up a lot of fuel, and fuel equals weight. In fact, our own John Das Galloway just did a video explaining the entire process from launch to landing. So make sure to check out the link to that video in the corner of your screen right now. Speaking of getting roasty toasty, it's not just drone ships and landing zones dealing with rocket engine blasts. The launch pads themselves also need to stay in tip top shape after constant blasts by nine engines. Right now there are three launch pads. Space Launch Complex 40 over at the Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, Launch Complex 39A at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida, and Space Launch Complex 4E in California. As of now, 39A is the only one able to support Falcon Heavy as well as crew launches. So it's going to be a bit of a launch pad shuffle to allow for time to check that all of the ground equipment isn't damaged after launches, because anyone who's watched a lot of launches knows ground support equipment can cause a lot of scrubs. Do I dare mention liquid hydrogen on Artemis 1 as an example? In theory, if you use the fastest turnaround time between launches at each pad, which has been as low as a few days, you can technically reach and exceed that 100 launch mark, assuming you don't have too many soot marks on all of your equipment. As much as SpaceX can ramp up production and trim turnaround times, there's one thing they don't have control over, the range, which includes Mother Nature. Prior to each launch, the range is monitored by the U.S. Space Force. One of their key jobs is tracking, of course, the weather. As reliable as Falcon 9 is, there are still rules about certain clouds they can't fly through. 
upper level wind concerns, and not flying in the rain, just to name a few. Plus, SpaceX has the added difficulty of weather at the landing zones, especially in the ocean. High seas before a booster is fully secured could see one toppling over into the water. The other part of the range is all of the people around the launch area. That includes tracking wayward boats entering into restricted areas, planes flying into a temporary no-fly zone, and even the potential to hit other satellites passing overhead at just the right time, or I guess the wrong time. SpaceX also does not own the range. As a result, they'll have to share time and resources with other launch providers such as ULA and now Relativity, whose first flight is scheduled for this year from Florida. Before we address the Starship-sized elephant in the room, I want to tell you about our channel memberships and why you should join. If you become a Red Team member today, not only do you get custom channel emojis like the Starship hug or our famous yikes, you bet, concur, from our livestream intro, you also get early access to content, special uncut footage from our co-contributors out in the field, and even photographs that are only shared with our channel members. And if you join at Capcom level or above, you also get access to our members-only Discord, where you can hang out with the NSF gang, ask questions, and find hundreds of other space fans just like you to chat with, game with, and track every movement at KSC or Starbase with. Your membership directly helps support more videos just like this one, so give it a shot and explore the benefits of an NSF membership. All you have to do is click the Join button below this or any of our videos, and you'll get instant access, starting at only $1.99 US per month. And trust me, it's worth it. In our recent video, our members voted the first orbital flight of Starship as the 2023 space event they're most looking forward to. And I'm sure many of you had Starship in the back of your mind this entire video. Now, SpaceX is hoping for rapid reusability with Starship, which will be able to launch many more Starlink satellites in a single mission. Now, SpaceX is hoping for rapid reusability with Starship, which will be able to eventually launch many more Starlink satellites in a single mission. So, if you're thinking this might help them reach 100 launches this year, turns out it might actually hurt their chances. SpaceX has said that they plan to launch Starship primarily from Florida and use Starbase as a development and testing site. Work is continuing at 39A to build a whole Starship tower and infrastructure. That construction, though, could cause delays to launches as they put things on hold to deliver parts like the giant chopstick arms that will eventually catch parts of the rocket for reuse. So that means more launches out of Slick 40, right? Well, not exactly. As we mentioned, 39A is the only pad that can launch crew, and we've seen that Starship elements can to put it bluntly, explode. If that were to damage the Falcon pad at the Cape, they'd have no way to launch crew to the ISS. So that means now they're working to add a crew access arm over at Pad 40. In fact, NASA themselves told SpaceX they were concerned about the Starship pad being so close to the crew tower. So if something happened to go wrong with the Starship launch, they'd have no other way to send crew to the ISS, causing issues for astronauts who might have to stay in space even longer. It also eliminates the ability to send a lifeboat dragon in case of an emergency. And if the crew on the ISS has to come home early, that's a lot of science time that is lost. Science which benefits us right here on Earth. Which means, again, more construction which could lead to more launch delays. So it's safe to say 100 launches is possible, but a lot of things have to go just right to make it a reality. In all, the idea of more launches means so many more opportunities for amazing work in space. The ability to launch new communication satellites will improve internet access to everyone, especially people in rural areas. More rockets also means more science missions which can help us understand our place in the universe. And we can't forget the satellites designed to look right back at us on Earth, tracking everything from the climate, to crop growth, to hurricanes and typhoons. So what do you think? 
Do you think 100 launches are possible this year? How many launches do you think they're going to get to? Let us know down in the comments below. It'll be fun to watch this video back one year from now and see just how close SpaceX got to that 100 launch mark. Now, don't forget, you can watch live streams of almost all launches right here on our YouTube channel. I'm Sawyer Rosenstein for NASA Spaceflight. Thanks for watching. Later, nerds.